many Republicans and religious right-wingers here in the United States have this belief that people should submit to God and the Bible first, first and foremost, and then authority figures and authoritative entities after that. It's the irrational and sometimes dangerous belief that submission to God is freedom. This kind of belief is dangerous because it can so easily transfer to the notion that submission to an authority figure or submission to an authoritative entity is freedom. It can easily turn a strong personality into a cult figure, like with what we've seen with Trump and Republicans. And they're still doing this. I mean, look at what they did with Liz Cheney. You know, they're demanding that all Republicans be loyal to Trump because, you know, they've changed the definition of patriotism and we're supposed to be okay with that, right? You know, it's bad when the left wing redefines words, but when the right does it, it's okay because they have tradition on their side or, or something, right? Yes, Republicans and the right wing over the past four years have changed the definition of patriotism to mean being loyal to a person instead of being loyal to a country and everyone in it. And so to these types of people, if an authoritative entity pushes concepts that go against the Bible, it can no longer be considered an authority and these people will fight with everything they have to restore the authority back to being something biblical. You know, I mean, it's this notion, the government is good and great when it's promoting biblical and traditional values. And the government is the worst thing in existence that will lead to millions of deaths like under Stalin if it promotes any other types of values. You know, it's, it's either Christian supremacy or Stalin. That's what people are trying to convince people that we have the choice of. And it's not that way, but this is what they believe, so, you know. If an authority figure states things that go against the Bible or traditional living, traditional values, they're to be labeled a communist and shamed as much as possible. Now, thankfully, right-wing shaming isn't nearly as effective as it once was. I mean, I think it was the 1980s when the Republican Party and religious right-wingers would push stuff like, you know, the satanic panic and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, the 80s is the last time they had a lot of power in their shaming techniques. So they had a little bit left in the 90s, but uh, when they try to push this stuff now, they just look pathetic. Thankfully, you know, we've, we've progressed on uh, socially from that type of crap, so. But, you know, to these people, anything that clashes with the notion that God made this planet and the universe all for us is immediately dismissed as communist, of course. Take climate change, for instance. To these people, God wouldn't let the planet become uninhabitable. And therefore, we shouldn't need to do anything to fix a, a non-existent problem. After all, if there's some unknown scientist on the internet with no credentials, if they say that, that climate change isn't real, well, th it must be true. And therefore, you know, look, a scientist says this. They must be right because it meshes with the viewpoints from the Bible. And the Bible is always right. It says so, right? When there are alternate ideas of morality based on sociology, that start becoming popular and actually start getting considered an authority when it comes to morality, it'll all get labeled as communist propaganda, even if it has absolutely nothing to do with communism. Again, everything needs to be based on the Bible or biblical values, or it can't be considered an authority in anything. That's how these people think. What the right wing in this country, I mean, with power anyway, what they want is for there to be a great social reset where society at large and the government bases its authority on the Bible again. Like it was in the 1950s when we added under God to the pledge and we added in God we trust on all of our money. You know, back when black people and women knew their place, when LGBT were closeted and left-wing viewpoints were underground. Yeah, these types of Republicans and religious right-wingers 
want there to be a great social reset, or they want an authoritarian leader to set things straight, to make things the way they used to be, to take away the feelings of guilt that so many religious people seem to have now, that they're feeling more and more as time goes on because their views are being shown as archaic, prejudiced, hateful, and anti-science. Trump represented and still represents that type of hope for these people. Hope that their views would again rule the roost. And the Republican Party seems to be putting all of their eggs in the Trump basket, not caring how fascist they appear anymore. And let's be clear, the way that so many people on the right wing just gush over the notion of Trump taking control is fascist. Wanting a leader to set things right, to make your traditional beliefs rule the roost, is fascism. It's no different than Germans having wanted to have a leader set things right back in the late 1930s. Only this time all the fear-mongering is about, you know, acceptance of LGBT. And kids learning that some people have two moms or two dads. There's critical race theory that I used to think was purely the type of thing that con artists like Robin DiAngelo push at corporate seminars. But she's just a con artist taking advantage of corporate culture. But yeah, there's, there's fear-mongering around teaching in any way that the way that this country was founded was messed up and that there are still negative patterns that reverberate into our society from that to this day. You know, we're apparently not supposed to learn that. We're apparently supposed to teach that colonialism was a good thing. You know, similar to, I mean, the, the people who push that sort of notion, you know, the, or, the, or that it wasn't really that bad are usually the same types of people who push that the actions of Israel, you know, aren't really that bad, right? Because, you know, oh, well, you know, any piece of land has taken uh, from someone. So, you know, what's the big deal? You know, what, what do you say to people like that, you know? But, you know, woke theory is destroying this country and we need a strong leader to put a stop to it. That's how these people think. Can wokeism go too far? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've made a number of videos about it. And that's not what this video is about, so... But it's kind of funny to me. The right wing in this country, the people who say they're all about personal liberty and freedom, are the first ones to defend the messed up war on drugs. How does that work? Oh yeah, their supposed principles of liberty and freedom are just a sham, for the most part. And maybe I should take this time to say, not all everyone, not all everyone, not all. You know, with these people, it's all about wanting order, usually based on the Bible or biblical teachings or values. And those who submit to those values and submit to proper authority are good people. And those who don't submit to that are bad people and should be removed or separated from the population. It's, it's all part of this mindset that is exactly why we have more of a percentage of our population in prison than any other country. Order, everyone, order. This sort of thing is the type of authoritarianism the right wing wants. Most of the right wing in this country, the ones who have power. Fascism, on a social level. One doesn't have to want the government to take over industry to be fascism. One doesn't have to be promoting genocide to be promoting fascism. You know, on a social level, if you're pushing for everyone to have this one way of life, this one kind of belief, this one type of worldview, and everyone's supposed to have it, and submit to authority that, that pushes this sort of thing, and you think everyone should, should fall in line to that? Yeah, you're kind of fascist. How fascist will the Republican Party become? Over the next few years, well, that's yet to be seen, right? We shall see.